networking, security, and Wireshark. So I covered this topic before in brief in a previous video, but I wanted to do a little bit of a deep dive in it. And it's how companies track you inside their stores. So believe it or not, when you walk into a big box store, so this is a top-down view of different uh, aisles and different sections of a big box store. We are in a big box store here. And the door is here, for example. So the time you walk into the store, your activities are being monitored in the sense of your location within the store is being tracked. So how do they do this, right? Well, when you have a mobile phone, so say this is your iPhone, and it is Bluetooth enabled, which almost every single one is these days, your phone is constantly throwing out what are known as Bluetooth probes or Bluetooth beacons. And what these are, are effectively radio messages being sent out trying to find other Bluetooth devices. So if you ever tried to pair your device with another device, like pair your device with your car or with like a stereo, you'll know there's a pairing process involved where your device scans and searches for other devices. This is actually happening all the time when you have Bluetooth enabled. And what's more is that these Bluetooth beacons have an address that's associated with them. So this address is a hardware address meaning it is addressed that is unique to your device. So you're constantly sending out these broadcasts to everyone around your device saying, hey, I'm looking for something to pair with. It has a unique identifier on it. Now, this unique identifier doesn't say it's, you know, Bob's device, but we'll get to that later on. And as you go about your day-to-day, -day, that device is just constantly doing this unless you turn Bluetooth off. So now let's fast forward to how that could be used. So in any sort of modern big box store, what they'll have are devices placed around the store, which are known as Bluetooth scanners. They may be called other things, depending on the vendor. But effectively what they do is they're used to detect these beacons as people walk around the store. Now, just like previous examples, they may claim that they're using these to better understand the behavior of their clients so that they know, you know, what things are popular and what are not. So I'll give you an example. So say I'm walking in, right? This is me. And I go through the clothing aisle. I don't really have to buy any clothes. So I kind of go through that pretty quickly. I spend a lot of time in the meat aisle. Okay. Like a lot of time. I really need a lot of meat. Say I have a barbecue coming up. Um, I go to the produce aisle, uh, skip it because it's just a big meat barbecue, do a little bit of time in cleaning, spend a lot of time in the pharmacy, okay, buying all sorts of products because maybe I have a health condition. Spend a lot of time in the alcohol section, right, because again, I'm having a party, but maybe I'm buying a lot of alcohol all the time. And then I head to the checkout. So, and this is the cashier here. So they may say, well, this data helps us understand what our customers like and dislike because you can see patterns like, well, customers spend a lot of time around the meat section or they spend a lot of time in the pharmacy section. So maybe this is a more popular section than produce is, right? Or maybe this is a specific type of alcohol that we've got on sale. And I notice that a lot of customers tend to visit this booth. Um, and the way, again, that they do that is that as you walk around, your device is putting out these beacons and they can tell your device is here. And then maybe later on you're over here and then they can say, well, your device is over here. And then later on your device is over here. So you can see how very easily that unique identifier from your device can be spotted at different locations. They can track where you are because all these sensors are here to detect the variations in your signal. So they can triangulate where you are. Um, and that it's uniquely this device. They still don't know it's you yet, but it's this device. So keep, keep following. So if this was just done at a wide scale to say, well, let's just take a thousand customers and see how they kind of interact with our store, right? They already have cameras to look at people. So this, it's not like it's private, like what stuff people are going to. But the fact that now that they have identifiers in that data means, well, they know specifically what this device is going to. 
And they know what this device is going to, not just this day that you had your barbecue, but every single day you visit the store. And every single day you visit any one of their stores. So this isn't, doesn't just have to be one store. This could be every store that this chain operates company-wide or countrywide. And that company may be a set of 10 companies, right, that are owned by the same parent company. So now, once you get to the point where you're going to check out, this data is valuable to the company on aggregate, but it's even more valuable to them if they know who this person is. Because if you've seen my previous videos, one of the most valuable things that these companies can sell is not their product, but is data, data on their customers. So if they can associate this device, this shopping pattern with a specific person, that makes them even more money. And the way they do that, their sensor is near the cash. So when you go to check out, you have your credit card, right? Your phone is in your pocket. And as you do that transaction, the device that's actually used for that transaction, the beacon is being picked up. And the minute they pick it up once, that's all they need. Because at that point, you've got that unique address. Again, it's unique to the hardware, which is your phone, associated with your identity. You have all of your shopping patterns for this store, all the other stores that are owned by this corporation. Um, and that all gets bundled up into data, which inevitably these companies sell to third parties for big bucks. So not only are they using this data to kind of study you and your patterns, but who knows who else knows now about your shopping habits. And the last thing I'll say is that if you think that this is kind of innocent data, well, tell me about what you buy. You know, tell me about how much meat you buy. Tell me about what stores you go to. Tell me about how many vegetables you buy in a week. Tell me what medications you're using. Tell me what, whether or not you have alcohol or not, right? Do you buy cleaning products? Is your house clean? Think about if you put all that information together about a person or a family, what does that actually tell you about that family, right? The answer is, it tells you a lot, right? That's a lot of information about your family that's being shared. And it would be one thing if the company said, well, we're doing it just so that we can, again, make this shopping experience better for you and your family. Just like advertisers online say, we're, we're collecting all this data to make the ads that we serve you better. But we know that these companies are in the business of not just selling products, they're in the business of selling data. And that data goes somewhere for big bucks. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions on the topic we've covered, please join the Discord server where we talk all things network. Until next time.